Right, so this story is somewhat surprising, perhaps, I feel, certainly, given how much our political class bow and scrape at the altar of Rupert Murdoch. But it seems recent news stories and the Murdoch hate rag, The Sun, ref preferably referred to as The Scum, because that is precisely what it publishes, reaction to them, and we are, of course, talking about both the Hugh Edwards allegations they ran with and Dan Wooden allegations they haven't. Why cover one story and not the other? And actually, not the only media that's been accused of this. When both covered alleged abuses by media presenters, both are in relation to that, particularly when one story of alleged criminality was proven to be false. Uh, the scum newspaper knew it to be false, apparently, and yet this was still the story it ran with. The other was ignored because, well, why? The scum, of course, has now widely been panned for the resultant suspension and hospitalisation even of BBC News presenter Hugh Edwards. Those who have followed this story or watched my content covering it will know that the scum published revelations accusing Edwards of soliciting indecent images from a minor. As it turns out, the Friday before the story was published, the family involved, not least the individual themselves, told the paper the story was false and not to publish it. Yet... They did it anyway, even failing in their duty of giving the victims right of reply, because, of course, they would have just refuted the allegations the scum was putting out. The person in question had apparently been paid for images, but was not a minor. Therefore, whatever you might think of Edward proclivities, no crime was committed. It was a non-story, therefore. It got dumped out for some reason, though. Some think it was just an opportunity for Murdoch or those working for him to attack the BBC, something Murdoch hates as a rival to his version of Fox News as the BBC is here in the UK, talk TV. And an interview with former scum editor David Yelland recently saw him readily admit to publishing stories just to please the boss. So that could be why this went ahead. However, coinciding with all of this was Boris Johnson's Privileges Committee ruling being approved by Parliament and the fact he still hadn't handed over his phone for those WhatsApp that it contained to the COVID inquiry, uh, in violation of a court order at that point, no less, because apparently he'd forgotten the passcode. The Hugh Edwards story buried this for several days, and it was a non-story. It was, frankly, in my opinion, irresponsible gutter journalism refuted by the family of the individual affected by what Edwards had apparently done. But this is the scum living down to its reputation, isn't it? On Dan Wooten, though, there's been silence, and that appears to be despite him also working for a rival to Murdoch's Talk TV, in that he's on GB News, GBBs. Much more on the same page as each other, I suppose, in their case. GBBs also having widely panned the BBC for not having suspended Hugh Edwards as well, with immediate effect when all the allegations against him came out. They themselves, of course, have welcomed Wooten back from his holly bobs without a peep of a word about a suspension themselves. Against him, though, hypocrisy writ large, in which case. Wooten, of course, formerly worked for Murdoch at the News of the World and at the Scum, and allegations made exclusively by Byline Times, which Wooten refutes. He's lawyered up with top firm Mishcon Dorea, no less, though he's crowdfunding to pay them, apparently, pleading poverty to his fans. Well, why not just choose a cheaper firm, Dan, unless you can actually afford it, in which case, why the crowdfund? And call me a cynic if you like. But why use a general crowdfunder instead of one of the bespoke justice ones that means funds raised can only be used for legal fees? The issue so far as the scum is concerned now, though, is that some of Byline's allegations outline his activities whilst he was at the scum, including accusations of sexual harassment, age discrimination and more. One senior member of staff went into a boardroom with a knife to slit their wrists over Wooten's acts against him because management had sided with Wooten. At least one staffer was left suicidal. Others have suffered from stress or even left the scum completely over this. A culture of failing staff and protecting their apparent star is the accusation Byline have made. And so Parliament has come knocking on Rupert Murdoch's door, it seems, in the form of the Culture, Media and Sport Committee, having written to current scum editor Victoria Newton, asking about both of these stories, wanting to know about the due process involving both stories and the scum's reaction to them. The committee chair, a Tory MP no less, Caroline Dinanich, has written to Newton, wanting to know in the case of Hugh Edwards how they verified the story and whether the scum was undertaking any internal reviews of this story getting published in light of the accusations and allegations that have come out since, claiming the entire thing is bunkum. The wording from Dynanage to Newton reportedly reads, 
Our role is not to challenge individual stories or editorial decisions, but we would be grateful if you could set up the processes by which the Sun verifies any story it chooses to report, especially those where issues of privacy may be at stake. And she added, given the concerns that have been reported about inaccuracies, changing narratives and lack of engagement with some of the parties involved in the case of Mr. Edwards, we would also be interested to understand what was done to verify this specific story and what, if any, reviews or discussions are ongoing about the Sun's procedures and reporting in this case and any wider lessons to be learned very diplomatic i'm sure as far as dan wooden goes both the scum and also mail online whom wooden also writes for us saying they are investigating the allegations that wooden was pretending to be some kind of a showbiz agent called martin branning and offering thousands for explicit images of celebrities work colleagues and even his friends diana Nish said on this part of the committee investigation allegations have been made about a former employee of the sun dan wooden who has been reported as being involved in payments for sexual material we would be grateful if you could set out what investigations are taking place into this matter so it's all very civilised right now. But Parliament, it would seem, has been sufficiently bothered by the appalling lack of alleged due diligence, in my opinion. It's par for the course of this god-awful paper. You will have your own views about it, I'm sure. But it's murder. How far will Parliament be prepared to go with this? The only MP I'd rate to have a go at those coming before this committee, should Victoria Newton or someone else be summoned to answer questions at, by the committee in front of them at some point in future, if that happens that's not happening yet i suppose that'll depend on the responses the committee gets at this point would be the smp's john nicholson clips of whom when asking questions on said committee regularly feature on social media most recently he was tearing up mps like jacob reese morgan nadine dorries apart for their extracurricular tv presenting work so i'm sure he'd have a field day with this subject but with every other MP being Tory or Labour on the committee, six Tories or Labour, and both their bosses kissing up to Murdoch as they do, both guests at his recent summer party, Sunak and Starmer. Starmer especially, it has been claimed recently, uh, that they can't get rid of him at Murdoch Towers, such as his desperation to win over his approval. So how likely is eventual censure, should this committee recommend one to Parliament, to vote on? I mean, I'm... Jumping the gun a bit here, I suppose. We've not got to that stage anywhere close to it. And perhaps we won't ever get there. But surely we should if all of this is proven. And if it does not, if it does get proven and still nothing gets done, well, what does that say about who runs the country? Is it our politicians or is it actually Rupert Murdoch, in fact? A lot of people will say the latter. Uh, we'll see how things pan out, of course. This might well go on for a wee while yet, so I'll keep an eye on it and keep coming back to you. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video useful. Please do like, share and subscribe if you did. New content out daily. Meanwhile, here's a video recommendation where you can catch up on the Wooden story in some more detail. Hundreds of other vids besides that, though, if you fancy something else. And I will hopefully see you on the next video. Cheers, folks.